Hey guys, welcome back. This is a continuation of the previous tutorial where we talked about uh, uh, the general overview of uh, image segmentation using traditional machine learning. And we took our step one, which was uh, extracting features and organizing them into a pandas data frame. Now let's actually train a random forest classifier using that data. But before doing that, we uh, we left one of the steps, you know, for, for this tutorial, which is uh, splitting our data, input data, into uh, testing and training data sets. Okay, so let's pick up from there and uh, continue. I have the code from last time uh, open here. Again, don't be intimidated by seeing all of this methodical, you know, do this step by step. Everything makes sense. Okay, it's just laborious. It's not, it's not uh, impossible to do this. So, so far, just to, just to uh, remind you, we have created an empty pandas data frame and we started filling it with relevant features. Feature number one, the pixel value of my original image itself, where we said, okay, the original image pixel value has enough, a lot of information that can be very useful for our segmentation purposes. And then we added uh, uh, responses from our image by applying Gabor kernels, and we generated 32 Gabor kernels and generated obviously 32 responses there. In addition to that, we added Canny Edge, Robert, Sobel, Shar, and Pruitt, uh, of uh, edge detectors and uh, added those columns, okay? And finally, to our data frame, uh, of course. And finally, we also generated some uh, responses with Gaussian filter with a sigma value of three, sigma value of seven, and uh, median with a sigma value of three. Originally, we also added variance, but realized this is very slow, so just uh, uh, choose to not do it anymore. So I, I kind of commented that part of the code out. Finally, the last column that got added to our pandas data frame was the, uh, the actual label itself, right? I mean, uh, if you look at our labeled image, every pixel has a label, whether it is blue, yellow, green, or red. So we imported that image, labeled image in, uh, of course, that's a uh, color image. So we converted that into a gray image and then reshaped it to a single column and tagged it to our data frame. And uh, here is the printout of the data frame. And you can see the final columns being Gaussian S7, median S3, and labels, which is what we just added. Okay, so the next step, we are done with features. We are, this is completely uh, f done with features. Now we need to import our random uh, forest classifiers and everything. But again, before that, let's actually define what the dependent variables are and what the independent, right? Here, as you can imagine, the dependent variable is label, right? Anytime you do any modeling, you're trying to predict something. And a bunch of variables affect that uh, prediction. So the value that you're trying to predict or the class that you're trying to predict is the dependent variable, obviously, because it's dependent on a bunch of other variables. So let's start with dependent variable. Okay, so our dependent variable, usually you call it y, right? When you define a line, you say y equals mx plus c or mx plus b, yeah? Where x is the independent variable, y is the dependent. So our dependent variable is nothing but our data frame with the column label called labels, okay? Let's take the values from here and that is my dependent variable. So if I run this code, maybe we can comment out that print statement over there because it's... Uh, okay, so it says that there is nothing like label. Okay, I called it labels. Let's just fix that. And also let's fix this print statement here so we don't have to look at all of that uh, uh, gabors. Uh, it's somewhere here, okay, there you go. So let me comment those two out and let's run this one more time. So now we should just see our, uh, okay, there you go. That worked very well. And our Y, if I can look at it right here, there you go. So my Y is nothing but these many points and then, uh, I mean, these many data entries in, uh, in, the, in the list and there, there you go, okay? Or an array, if you want to call that. So that's my uh, Y and uh, now I need to define X. 
which is the independent variables okay so to define x one way to do it is to just go back and say okay my x is uh, anything with my uh, i mean my x has a column name of original image and then gabor 1 gabor 2 gabor 3 and canny edge roberts and blah 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 and so on but the easiest way to define x is it's nothing but uh, my data frame all columns except for the column named label that's it uh, so the way to do that is df dot drop okay from our data frame drop anything that has labels well don't be confused with uh, between this labels and label so any column that has labels or any uh, of what is the label name so we called it label sorry for this confusing column names but uh, I hope this makes sense axis equals to one so what this means is take this data frame drop everything i mean sorry draw keep everything except for the column that's labeled label okay so now let's go ahead and run this and uh, hopefully we should see uh an x up here let's clear everything in fact uh, um, this is getting a bit busy <laughs> let's run this one more time okay so we just uh, see only the ones that uh, matter from now on okay so our x is the data frame with columns uh, 41 columns and our original data frame has 42 columns so the only difference is we dropped the column uh, na uh, that's labeled label there that's pretty much it so now the next step is splitting data into test and train let's split the data into test and train so uh, the way to do this is uh, again i covered this in a couple of my previous tutorials so i'm just gonna go ahead and uh, not explain it a lot but uh, under scikit-learn you have model selection that has a great way train test split s p l i t yeah so import this train test split so what does it do train test split so the way to apply this is uh, define your areas x and y okay and my test size equal to let's uh, hold out 40% of my R data from x and y for testing which means 60% is available for training and I'm also gonna fix my random state um, just give any number it doesn't matter so what this random state does is of course it's going to randomly split the data into train and test size but the way it's actually going to randomly split is going to be the same or it's using the same state uh, seed or state in other words so I get the same data every time I run my code i don't want my train data changing every time i run the code okay that's not an efficient way to uh, uh, that's not the best way to do uh, do this because if you if the random state changes every time then some of your test data may have been used for training uh, in the last uh, you know so anyway so that's what uh, random state means so now that uh, well actually this is how you apply this but we need to unwrap it right so the first variable that we unwrap is the training for x okay the second one would be the testing for x uh, testing data set and then uh, sorry y train and then y test okay so i'm just unwrapping this output from this train test split method into these four variables so now let's go ahead and run it okay so you see x test has uh, about 407,000 uh, data points and X train has about 611,000 okay the, if you total them if you sum them it would be equal to whatever that 1,019,904 okay so this is uh, split into 60% and 40% so that's uh, basically our, uh, our data so now we are all set to to uh, feed this into our random forest classifier Okay, so let's import the model. So import and train the model. Okay, so import, uh, I don't know, ML algorithm, let's say, yeah. and train the model. So in this case, we are using random forest, but the process would be the same way, uh, depending on whatever, uh, you know, uh, uh, the classifier that you would like to import. So random forest is located in sklearn.ensemble. <clears throat> okay within ensemble import random forest classifier 
I'm stressing a bit on classifier because there is also an, uh, another one called random forest regressor. So you can use either. And as the name suggests, random forest regressor is trying to predict an actual value. In our case, if you look at uh, the labels that we have, our labels are 29, 76, 100 something. We actually would like to classify our data into one of these bins either 29. We want to classify our data into red or green or blue or yellow. That's why I'm using classifier. If you use a regressor, then the result would be a floating point number that can be 29.5. Okay, That doesn't mean anything for us. Then we have to convert that into some sort of a uh, integer and uh, other steps. So I hope it makes sense. If you're doing financial uh, forecasting, you know, if you're trying to do regression type of analysis, use random forest regressor. Here we are doing uh, here we are doing classification, obviously. So that's why we uh, I'm using classifier. So uh, instance uh, create an instance for the model. This is again random forest classifier and uh, random forest how many estimators do you want to use right again please watch my random forest uh, tutorial if you haven't uh, looked at it but how many uh, estimators and then because it is random forest we need to define well we can force it to have a specific random state i'm going to call it random state 42 um, you can put random state 20 whatever the state uh, random state number is okay I put 42 because that is the answer to the life's ultimate question. And if you get that, then uh, <laughs> you have some good uh, sense of humor, or at least you are leading a great life. OK, let's get back to this. So now that I created a uh, uh, instance for this model, then let's fit it. OK, fit to what? My training data, right? X train, Y train. Does it make sense? So we created an instance for this model, and then we are fitting it to the X train and Y train data set. I don't know what this is saying, undefined name train. Oh, sorry, X underscore train, okay? So now it fits the model, that's it. To implement random forest, it's literally these lines. To get to this point, it's all of these 100 lines we have written before this. OK, so now that we have uh, implemented it, we are done. But uh, w w uh, we need to validate it. Is it doing a good job? What is it doing? Right. So first of all, let's go ahead and uh, and uh, uh, predict something. OK, so uh, first of all, we need to calculate the accuracy. So how accurate is this? So let's go ahead and try to find out what the accuracy is. So first, let's actually predict this on our training data itself. If it doesn't do a good job, then that's not great. I mean, on training data itself, it should do a good job. So let's uh, define a variable called prediction train, OK? And uh, the way to do prediction, again, recall the model, OK? And then dot predict. Predict on what? On x underscore train. OK, so this is our uh, prediction on X underscore train. So if you run this, it's going to do the prediction. OK, so it's actually done with the prediction. And if you want to look at this prediction train, it's actually done these predictions. And um, again, uh, I don't know how good this is or how bad it is. So we need to compare this with something else, right? So to find out if this is a good or bad. So uh, in fact, let's uh, I changed my mind. So let's go ahead and do prediction on the test data set. So let's just go ahead and do test. OK, so once it's done predicting, how do we know how good the prediction is? OK, uh, and by the way, model.predict, uh, it actually does the uh, prediction. There is something else also called dot predict underscore proba, P-R-O-B-A. Uh, and that gives you the probabilities. OK, uh, so all the prediction is doing is in the back end, it's actually doing the probabilities and then uh, converting that into a prediction. That's pretty much it. OK, uh, anyway, so let's uh, go ahead and import another useful thing from scikit-learn called metrics. 
and how can metrics help us it actually helps us print uh, or uh, or find out our accuracy of the training data so let's go ahead and print what do we want to print uh, let's just say accuracy equal to okay uh, and uh, let's just do metrics dot accuracy score there it is the first one okay and what do we compare accuracy score is nothing but it takes in two uh, you know y true and y predicted and then it just gives us the accuracy so our y true is nothing but y test right so this is the this is the one that we actually uh, held out for testing purposes there you go this one the y test and compare that against the prediction test that we just calculated so this is prediction underscore test so there you go so i hope that makes sense so from metrics all it does is metrics dot accuracy score it looks at two of these and then just prints out the accuracy between these two so now let's go ahead and run this okay there you go look at the accuracy 98 percent. that's pretty amazing right so this is it so this is how you can uh get your data organized, split it into training, testing data sets, and then train a random forest classifier or any other classifier of your choice, okay? And that is usually a single line, well, two lines here. One, you create an instance for this model, and the next you fit it using uh, the training data set for X and Y. Again, X is all the dependent variable, independent variables, Y is the dependent. And then we predict it on our testing data set, okay? And printed out the accuracy. In this example, my accuracy is 98%. I'm super happy with this, uh, with this model. And I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and uh, uh, use this model to segment other images, okay? So uh, let's... Uh, continue this tutorial in the next one where I'm going to talk about uh, uh, which features are relevant because right now we are generating a whole bunch of features, right? I mean, we are generating about 40 some features, 43, 44, 42 uh, features are actually 41. One of those uh, is actually the labels. So we are using all of those, but then which ones are actually contributing towards my 98% accuracy? Let's save that for the next video. So let's meet again in the next uh, tutorial. So we are not done yet, okay? Please watch the next one. Thank you very much. And obviously, uh, I know you love this video. Go ahead and like it and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.